There's plenty of interest in small modular reactors these days in Canada, particularly Alberta has just joined, uh, signed a, a memorandum of understanding with three other provinces uh, to advance the technology and perhaps implement it in their jurisdictions. So uh, coincidentally, uh, a company called New Scale in the United States just got the first SMR approved by the Federal, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, I think FERC. And uh, to discuss that, we've, we've got Dom Claudio from New Scale here, and welcome to the interview, Dom. Thank you, Mark. I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, Don, Dom, I know there's a lot of interest in this, and, and, and nuclear has a lot of advocates, and so they've immediately you know, cottoned on to SMRs, but really, I'm not sure what SMRs are all that much. So what's significant about this approval from FERC this time? So the, uh, the approval, uh, which essentially is the uh, final safety evaluation report by the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission, essentially evaluated the safety case behind our technology. And that's the, the most interest uh, to the uh, regulator, as for, and it's, it's absolutely the most important thing that they do. This level of effort has taken over two and a half years, uh, has, has cost over $500 million, has taken about 2 million man hours in order to complete. It's a very rigorous process in which not only you, one must present their design and, and uh, present why the design is safe, but also demonstrate why the design is safe in real terms. So that's taken a significant effort and a significant number of man hours, as you can imagine. What makes small modular reactors, I'll speak to the new scale small modular reactors, because there, there, there are very, uh, very many designs and each of them have uh, their own approach. The design that uh, we are utilizing essentially takes advantage of the fact that the module itself, what's known as the NSSS system in many regards, which is a nuclear supp steam supply system, can be factory built. And that provides a whole host of benefits from the standpoint that it can be controlled in an environment, a controlled environment, a quality environment. It can take advantages of lessons learned by the, from the standpoint of being able to reproduce that same fabricated module, if you will, over and over again, driving the cost down. And maybe the most important thing when it comes to the overall cost, the levelized cost of electricity, LCOE, is that this module, while it's being built in the factory, uh, can, it supports uh, in parallel the civil works that are going on. So you're building the civil structure in the field while you're building the nuclear supply system in the factory in parallel. And that typically will cut in half the typical duration of a project uh, from a typical gigawatt size plant that in which those two aspects are done in, in series. So it reduces the uh, length of time in which the project is ongoing and the financing costs involved, the risk that's involved, because you're doing the most important part, the most sensitive parts in a factory in a controlled environment. And uh, again, you're able to conclude the project a lot more, a lot more quickly, and, and again, benefiting from the factory aspects of it. So let's talk about cost. What are we looking at for an LCOE from one of your SMRs? So the first project that we're working on, which is the carbon-free power project led by UAMPS, we're targeting a, a, a LCOE cost of $65 US per megawatt hour. That, that's actually uh, fairly competitive. I mean, it's more than, than wind and solar right now, but of course this is baseload power we're talking about. And that, as I recall from Lazard, is below hydro new uh, large hydro for instance. Yeah, and, and so the aspect of this design in particular is not only can it be used as base load, but we believe in an all of the above solution when it comes to a clean energy solution. So the new scale design has very uh, 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 capable load following capabilities that will allow it to complement wind and solar and hydro either on a fairly instantaneous basis or on a long-term basis because of the scalability of the design and again, it's load following features. So that is also part of, of the UAMPS process and something that may be of interest up in Canada in the fact that it can be load following and also complement the clean energy system which might have wind and solar attached to it. And let's talk about size for a moment because I understand these are a fraction of the size of a, like as you say, a, a gigawatt uh, facility. So what size are we talking about? And if you put it close to a, uh, you know, a community, a city, uh, how, just how safe is it uh, from that point of view? 
So there's two aspects to the size. Uh, as far as the module itself, it's something that's transportable. So a, a module that can support 60 megawatts of electricity is built in the factory and transport. So that gives you a sense of the size of each of the modules. The module will go into a building uh, submerged in water. That building can house as many as 12 modules. So from the standpoint of that, that gives you a sense of the size. As far as the uh, uh, protected area, as we would call 35 acres or 14 hectares is, is uh, nominal size. Uh, what we were able to do fairly recently with the help of uh, Tennessee Valley Authority was approach the nuclear regulator and discuss um, the implications or the benefits of the emergency planning zone being to the site boundary. A typical gigawatt size plants because of, for a variety of reasons, but namely the ratio between the amount of water that's available and the size of the core would have a 10 mile, what's known as EPZ or emergency planning zone. In our case, we were able to demonstrate to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that an energy uh, emergency planning zone to the site boundary is, is, uh, is, is safe and is, 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 is achievable. This provides a number of opportunities as we uh, consider replacing fossil plants, coal fire plants, which may be near a town now, or which may have originally been distant from a town, but a town has built up around it. So replacing that coal fire plant with a new scale SMR uh, at the same site holds a lot of benefits because you're able to use the same infrastructure as well as utilize many of the same individuals and work workforce. Once the steam is produced in a, in a new scale SMR, the balance of plant is very similar to what you would find in a typical coal fire plant in, from the standpoint that you're taking steam and making electricity out of it. So those individuals and that workforce that was familiar with the balance of plant can be very much uh, retrained easily to support a new scale SMR. Final question, Dom. Uh, what about waste disposal? So although the, the new scale design, you know, is revolutionary in some ways and that it's modular, it's evolutionary in, other, in many ways and many of the more important ways in that it utilizes the same fuel and the same coolant that has been in play for decades. So the spent fuel, if you will, is very well characterized and understood. Uh, the Department of Energy in the United States has identified techniques and, and methodologies to uh, support the spent fuel. The spent fuel itself still has a lot of energy in it, and from the standpoint that it can be utilized at some future date, either with the new scale design or other designs, that's a, a, another source of energy. So we comply with the, uh, or the owner would comply with the requirements as specified by the Department of Energy and which has been in place for decades. Is there uh, a likelihood that in the uh, near term to medium term, New Scale and others will come up with designs that do, uh, cons you know, reprocess the the waste? Yes, uh, we you know we we certainly uh, are interested in continuing to mature the design and evolve the design, utilize the spent fuel that would come from a New Scale SMR, and I'm uh, and I do believe there are other. Uh, technologies out there that are starting down the road of utilizing and developing uh, techniques and designs that would use that same product. Don, thank you very much. This is a very, as I mentioned earlier, a very hot topic in Canada. I have no doubt that I'll be coming back to you again uh, to clarify some of these issues because th this really does uh, uh, require a little bit more of a technical understanding of the topic. And I appreciate uh, your comments today. My pleasure, Mark. I'm happy to do this and would welcome uh, the opportunity to meet with you again.